morning. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but citizens together with the saints and members of the household of God. Please stand. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise. And, and your glory all the day long. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the Venite. Come, let, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us, let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise the Lord a child with psalms. For you are a great God. You are great above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture, and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to your voice. Let us listen today to God's voice. Harden not your hearts, as your forebears did in the wilderness, at Mirabah, on that day in Massa, when they tempted me, they put me to rest, but they have seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, These people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity. One God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel Nahola, as a prophet in your place. Whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him.
Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. I will listen to what you are saying, for you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. You, O oh God, will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before you, and peace shall be a pathway for your feet. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. 
But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to open with a prayer. O true and faithful God, you are the hope of all who cry out to you. Help us to live as Jesus calls us to live. Raise us up when we stumble and fall and help us all to be witnesses to your truth and love. Amen. Keeping your eye on Jesus in a storm is a challenge. Whatever that storm might be, the winds and waves of a hurricane, the financial storm of unemployment, and the anxiety that comes with that when the rent is due and food is needing to be bought, the social storms of protesters crying out for racial justice, and then the storm that we are all going through of COVID-19 which is exposing all the racial and social inequities of our society. We are all living through these storms and there is no escape. Like Peter, we are overwhelmed. And like Peter, I'm sure, we are exhausted. When I hear Jesus tell Peter that he has little faith, I think, well, don't we all? Don't we all have faith that's little because it is always being tested in days like this? It's still being formed. Our faith is still maturing like fruit that ripens on a vine. But that little faith that Peter had allowed him to respond to Jesus's command to come and walk across the water to be with him. And also his little faith disturbed his focus when the winds threatened and he took his eyes off Jesus and started to sink. But I think that moment of seeking taught Peter about his faith. It taught him that we all doubt in the midst of being faithful. We all sink and fail in times of crisis. Those are the times when we can recover and build our spiritual courage. Those are the times that teach us to keep our eyes on Jesus and not to be distracted. So we can sink and be raised up by God's mercy. I wanna tell a story about my own sense of being in deep waters. It was about 20 years ago when my teenage son became ill with bacterial meningitis. This quickly moving bacteria made his body lifeless and left me fearful for his life. I felt totally out of control. I felt alone. But as he was being helicoptered to a hospital with a children's ICU, I realized I wasn't alone. When I got to the hospital, I was surrounded by community. Every person, whether it was hospital staff, friends, people from the church, 
or out of town family members came. They were all there. Everyone was there for Logan and everyone was there present for me. They were keeping me afloat when I felt so helpless. Each person was proof of God's assurance, telling me, I am here. I could do no more than ask for God's mercy while I fought against my fears. I had to hold on tight to those around me that God was providing. And the good news is that after about 24 hours, the antibiotic began taking effect and Logan's condition began improving and was upgraded. And a few days later, he was home. Today, we live in perilous times. And as I said, keeping our focus on Jesus is difficult. What I've found is that by committing to brief times of quiet and just allowing God to be present allows our faith to grow in the silence. And it allows us to come to understand more of what it means to be human and more of what it means to know that we come from God and have our being in God. In the silence, we can be still and listen to the voice that says, come. We all promise in our baptismal covenant that we will strive for justice and peace among all people and that we will respect the dignity of every human being. This is how God calls us to come. This is the work that he is asking us to do. It's what it means to be human, to do these great things with a desire and a dream that may be out of reach and that we may fail to achieve on our own. But I'm reminded that the poet Robert Browning said, but what's a man's reach should but a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? What's a heaven for? I think heaven is for now. Heaven on earth is living as God's beloved community, the one that Dr. King spoke about. It's living in a society based on justice, equal opportunity, and love for every human being. Catherine of Siena wrote, the path to heaven lies through heaven and all the way to heaven is heaven. This was in the 14th century when she was writing about a dialogue that she had with God. When God described to her Jesus as the bridge, a bridge that stretches from heaven to earth. Since this was how God joined humanity, in the incarnation. So these are the days when we can imagine Jesus as our bridge, connecting us to what we need to find as heaven on earth. Right now, it is heaven all the way to heaven. And when we, like Peter, accept Jesus's invitation to come and not lose confidence in his presence, in his faithfulness to us, he is going to be there ready to help us when we fall. So keep your eye on him. Stretch out your hand to his. In fact, stretch out your whole being, your whole self, and join others who labor in the fields where God's kingdom is gaining ground. Listen for the voice that says to come. Come, it is I, and put your little faith to work in building God's reign. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be ashamed or turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to, the, to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our lives. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to God. Seventy-five years ago today, a bomb named Fat Man exploded in the air a quarter of a mile above a city in Japan named Nagasaki. In an instant, 35,000 people died. Thousands more died of burns and radiation sickness in the weeks and months ahead. Three days earlier, the era of nuclear war had begun with the bombing of Hiroshima, where 50,000 or 60,000 people died in the initial blast and subsequent firestorm, and an equal or greater number in subsequent months. Six days after Nagasaki, World War ended with Japan's unconditional surrender. But the age of nuclear war is still with us, with this nation and others possessing the capacity to blast virtually all life off our planet God, we pray that you will protect us from ourselves, from our nuclear insanity, and that of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God, we pray that you will lead all who occupy positions of governmental authority into the pathways of justice. We pray especially for Donald, the President of the United States, for the members of Congress and the justices of the Supreme Court, for the governors, legislators, and judges of Maryland and Virginia, and for Muriel, mayor of this city of Washington, and for the council members and judges of the District of Columbia with whom she exercises governance. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, we pray that you will hold in your hands your church in every place. Hold in your hands the hands of its people 
that it and they may remain ever faithful to the carrying out of your will. We pray especially for the wise leadership of its bishops, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, First Bishop of our Anglican Communion, for, for Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, and for Mary Ann, the Bishop of Washington. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, we pray you will embrace with your abiding love this angry and frightened world we have created for ourselves. Guide each of us to see the face of Christ in the faces of each other, and especially in the faces of those we hate, fear, or refuse to know. Where there is war, breathe peace. Where there is fear, breathe comfort. Where there is ignorance, breathe wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, we pray that you will protect and embolden our neighbors and ourselves in this time of plague, sustaining and sustaining those who have contracted the virus or who have been devastated by the economic chaos created by the effort to bring the pandemic under control. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God, we pray that you will cast a loving eye on those in our midst who are observing birthdays at this time, granting many more years to Micah Pinsky, Mary Ella Simmons, Paree Roper, Matt Ponder, Ed Grandy, Cam Crockett, Kim Klein, Valerie Little, and Nicole Martinez. God, we pray you will bend with healing wings over those in our community who are ill or who need your aid in other ways. Ron Accord, Paul, Maggie, and Lisa Bonarosa, Ridgely Bennett, Tessie, Melissa Chavez, Paula Colley, Larry Cothern, Stephanie Ducadio, Brenda Evans, Renee Fairfax, Medina Garza, Betsy Haig, Santa Helena, Steve Hodges, Bertha Hunter, Robert Hunter, Greg Holloway, Wilda McBride, Vitorina Mazzotti, Mary and John Milroy, Esther Saverson, Ian Smith, Rebecca Spiegelman, Lindsay Jones, Trisha White, Durant Wilson, Joanne Ledford, Keith Watson, Kim Klein, Will Walco, John Tommy and Keith, Kathy, Jesse, Nancy, Ernie Jackson, Kathy, Ron, Alex, Gloria, Beth, Jose, Miguel, Norma, Eduardo, Barbara, and Joseph Lucas. Catalina and her siblings, Pauline, Anne, Raquel, and her newborn twin daughters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray that you will welcome into your peace those who have died, especially whose time has, cut by, has been cut short by COVID-19 or who have died at the hands of official or self-appointed law enforcement personnel. May all who have died rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son 
that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing.